Is America in decline? Is the once respected superpower now just like any other country with problems it can't solve? And if it is in decline, who's to blame? The president, the Congress, or we, the American people? Or in your opinion, is the US still the great nation, the greatest one in the world, the leader of all other countries, the one that other countries count on? Tell us what you think right now on It's Your Call. Is America in decline? That's the question we're posing to you and our guests this hour. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle. You know, it doesn't take a genius to realize that our country is in trouble. Employment figures show fewer people working now than in the last 20 years. We outsource millions of jobs. Home ownership is the lowest it's been since the 60s, and folks have very little in their savings accounts. Political divisiveness is now the norm, causing most Americans to have little or no faith in their elected officials. Now, all of this leads some people to say the glory days of America are behind us. But it leads me to say, do you agree with that assessment? Have we reached our peak as a superpower, as an international leader, and are our best days behind us? Here's another one for you. Why do we seem to help so many other people when these problems exist right here in this country? Could it be that America really is on the decline? If you want to tell us what you think, you know how it works. You can email me directly at lynn at lynndoyle.net. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube. As I said, it's a very difficult question to pose, and I'm afraid that the answers our panelists may provide here will be difficult to hear. Let's hear from them now. They include Edward Trzanski, who is a national security, intelligence, and pol political analyst. He's also at LaSalle University and a senior fellow at the Foreign Policy Research Institute. Ken Trujillo is an attorney and a former chairman of the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Jan Ting is a professor of law at Temple University Beasley School of Law. He too is also a senior fellow with the Foreign Policy Research Institute. And Nia Ingina Meeks is an award-winning journalist and a blogger. Everyone with very diverse backgrounds and I'm sure diverse opinions on America as well. By a show of hands, tell me who agrees with the assessment that America is in decline? Ed, uh, not so much, Jan. Well, so, it depends. Okay, we'll find out on what it depends, but who thinks that we're, we're still the superpower, we're still the position that we once were? We still are the superpower. We are. We still are the superpower. It okay. depends. <laughs> but we're, we're not going to be the sole superpower in the world for long. I mean, one of the reasons we're not the dominant power is because other countries are rising. And, uh, and it's good for the world that India and China are uh, raising their living standard and being able to produce goods and compete with the United States, that's all good, but it is having a, a consequence in the United States. We're really caught in a perfect storm of things that are happening. We have this debt crisis because we want more than we're willing to pay for in taxes. We have the real estate collapse. We have this political deadlock that you've, you've referred to. Um, so we're, we're confronted with a lot of problems. Plus, you know, the manufacturing jobs are gone. They're not coming back. The, uh, the notion that we're going to be able to restore these jobs with some political fix, I think it's a myth. There's automation, so, there's foreign competition. Those jobs are not coming back. So, Nia, yeah, given all of that, it sounds like a pretty strong argument that America, if it's not in decline, could be headed in that direction. How do you say that it's still a superpower? One could say it's headed in that direction, but let's be honest. When something happens in the world, the world turns to the United States of America for help, for guidance, for leadership. That has remained through all, all these years. And the main reason for that has been our sense of innovation and our sense of being able to create and recreate ourselves. When we toss with this question of decline, the real deal is, are we ready to adapt yet again? We have been adapting since our nation was founded. We have continued to change and we have moved the bar. But at this point, the question is, are we comfortable with where we are? And if we are, then yes, we will decline because of the reasons that Jan has underscored. However, that doesn't have to be the case. We have a choice. I think the question though is, does the term innovative apply to America anymore? Are we kind of behind the eight ball, so to speak, if China and India are moving forward? Are we moving forward at the same pace or are they catching up and we're falling behind? We're still the innovators in many respects, but let's focus just on decline and mention three things quickly. First of all, decline is a choice. It's not inevitable. 
you make bad decisions, you make enough bad decisions, and you'll set yourself on a course that'll be very difficult to avoid. And so if let's it's stop you right there and say if it's a choice. Are you saying America is making a choice to decline? Oh, we're making lots of bad choices that lead to bad outcomes that spell a direction which most people would say is decline. Secondly, decline is relative. Things may be very bad here until you compare us to other countries. Consider China. Everyone says China is the country of the future. Okay, they have a gender imbalance of 122 boys for every 100 girls, which means that within the next 30 years or so, China's going to become a very old, sick country. And the last point, if you go through American history, look at the period immediately after the Constitution was passed. There was great uncertainty. You get to the Civil War, more than 600,000 are killed. You get to a recession coming out of the Civil War, the Great Depression, Pearl Harbor. Five years after Pearl Harbor, America sits atop the world. So you're saying that this could be cyclical, that this has happened in our I'm history I'm saying before, it's happened before Americans we'll have come rallied, but as Mia suggests, if we don't have a serious discussion about what ails us, then we're deluding ourselves and setting us up, or ourselves up for problems. And your question is, is America in decline? Uh, I don't think America's in decline. I do think we're getting competition. I think we are getting company that we're not used to seeing. In the rise of India, China, uh, uh, countries that just a couple, of year, a couple of decades ago, we wouldn't even come close to considering as competition. So what we have is competition. But you look at the headlines that you just described, those headlines were the same 200 years ago, 100 years ago. So it may not be cyclical, it's a different set of challenges. Part of the problem today, though, I think that we do not have, that one of our great challenges is not our competitive nature, is not our innovation, but I think it's the great divisiveness that we're seeing around this country much more than our ability. And I, I view our divisiveness as being a greater challenge than the competition from around the world. We can't afford that either. There was a time when we didn't have that competition where we can afford to say, oh, those people over there, we might not care about them as much but because we're over here. We have to really look at this and say, you know, we're all Americans. Anytime you have cities where 50% of the students are not graduating from high school and we don't look at that as an immediate crisis, that's a problem. You have to look at it as, an, you can point to China, you can point to India, you can point to Germany. They don't look at it and say, oh, well, those are those Germans and we're these Germans. They're all Germans. Let's talk a little bit about this divisiveness because I think our comments that we've gotten so far from our viewers when we've posted this on social media sites, and I, I'd be curious to know what you think as you're watching the show, what we're hearing is that people really feel like if we're in decline, it's our own fault. It's not so much what these other superpowers are doing, but it's that we're not taking responsibility or accountability within our, our own borders, and we're fighting so much with each other but you know what? And we've, putting party we've labels always, on things, we're not we're not getting to the solution. Historically, Americans have always fought with each other over policy. I mean, if you Absolutely. look back in history, I mean, Adam, uh, John Adams, and Thomas Jefferson. The election uh, of eighteen hundred. Uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, the the Civil War. What was that all about? And and throughout American history, Americans have gone at it, kind of hammer and tong. We've taken the political process very seriously. We've thrown ourselves into it, and we've argued out the issues passionately. I mean, that's but one of the characteristics. Four hours a day that's on one, cable well, television, that's, that's te and not with the technology. rhetoric that we that's just have. Well, but, 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 but I do agree today. with Nia that innovation is the key. If we can remain an innovative society, then we can compete. We have to change with the times. We have to come up with new things all the time. Right. If we stand still, but we lose the game. How do you do that? How do you do you that when politicians? Die. Yes, but politicians argue with each other for the sake of arguing. But you know, if someone has a good idea, no one wants to give that person credit. 